Hi, my name is Nick, and in today's video, I'd like to take a look at the rear suspension of my DFXL Velomobile. So let me get you right to it. In the rear of the Velomobile is a hatch, and in the hatch, you could see that there is a rear derailleur, the cassette, and also the swing arm. Above the swing arm is the rear shock absorber, and I'd like to take a look at this. Now, the reason I'm looking at this is because, as you can see, I'm on second gear here. And if I point it downward, you could see that the rear derailleur doesn't have enough space to clear. If I try to shift the first gear while I'm in the small gear in the front, it hits the bottom because the pulley for the rear derailleur goes down further. Now looking behind the seat, as you can see, the chain goes to the cassette. And then here we could look at the rear shock absorber. There is a mount up here on the top, and it's hold on, held on by a bolt. There's a closer look at the rear derailleur from the front of the Velomobile looking backwards. This one does have a lockout lever here, and I went ahead and taped it on here so it wouldn't automatically get locked out. And there's also a Schrader valve here to adjust the air. This DT Swiss M212 rear suspension, I think is 200 millimeters long from eye to eye. And I think if I had a slightly shorter suspension, then I'd be able to shift into first gear. So a shorter suspension would raise this a little bit and then give more clearance on the bottom so the rear derailleur could shift through all the gears. So the first step I'm gonna have to do is go ahead and take this bolt off and try to remove the rear shock so I can measure exactly how long it is. Before I move this shock, I'll show you that the stock shock here does have quite a bit of space and I could go measure this. So the rear here from the frame to the bottom of the tire is just about I'd say nine, nine centimeters long, roughly three and a half inches to the ground. So I used a 10 millimeter crescent wrench and a four millimeter on the other side to remove the bolt and slid it off. And I probably need to do the same for the upper end too. And as I lower it down, as you can see, it might be hard to see. You see as I lower it down, the rear derailleur rests already on the frame just from a little bit of difference. So if I shortened it 10 mils, I think this will go up quite a bit and make room for the derailleur to swing. But I have to figure out how long this rear shock is. So here it is right here in second gear and it was about right here earlier as you can see it's a little higher than the frame now you've got to put it down gently so i don't break the rear trailer here is the dt swiss m212 suspension rear shock that came out of the dfx velomobile it has the air where you could go preload it has compression and it does have a lockout which you shouldn't ever use in the velomobile i think these are all discontinued now does say max bar 18 for how much air should be in there and it does come with up here these are some mounts that fit inside I guess they rotate a little bit and on the other side there's some inside here as well where the screw or bolt goes through to mount it onto the velmobile Okay, let's see how much this comes in at. 217 grams for this rear shock. I'm most curious about the length from eye to eye and it appears to be right about 200 millimeters. I'll go get the other side and measure that as well. Okay, so I flipped it over and I'm gonna measure it one more time. From here to here and it appears to be right at 200 again or about seven and seven eighths inches from eye to eye and let's take a look at the length of these so I'm going to go ahead and measure 
the hole and it looks like 10 millimeters wide for that hole. This one I'm assuming it's going to be 10 millimeter as well. Yeah that's coming at 9.99 and then let's look at the inside how wide that bolt is and it's about six millimeters for the inside of how wide this bolt is. Let's see measure this 5.89 just a little under six millimeters. Let me get this side as well and five and a half, five point nine, about six. The one thing I might be a little concerned about for trying to get a replacement if I do go with a go with a shorter suspension rear suspension is it might be hard to see, but this is perfectly lined up with the camera. And look at this one; it's it's kind of angled at a direction, and it's not like I could just easily move this. It's in it's in pretty tough. Let's look again. As this is this left side's perfectly straight. This one's angled in a different, it's not completely straight. Let's look at the stroke now. Typical suspensions in the 200 millimeter range are about 50 to 55. And as you can see here, if we have 55, it'll bring it all the way to the end. Right about there would be 55. So I think the maximum will be 55 if you go all the way to the end. But if you do leave five millimeter difference, 50 is still pretty long. A closer look again I'm going to put the tape measure right next to it and it shows that about 55 centimeters is the length of this stroke. Just to get some more measurements I'm going to measure the width of the barrel or this suspension here and that's about 27 millimeters across. Let me measure another portion just to be sure. Yep 27 there. The top part here is about eight and a half, eight point six. It's coming out to be millimeters, and on the top side, I'm assuming it's going to be around eight and a half to eight point six as well. About eight and a half, and not that you may need this measurement, but the measurement here is twenty-one, and probably the same with the other side. I don't see why it would be any different. Yep, about twenty-one millimeters there. For fitment purposes, the barrel, the larger area here is 44.6 millimeters and this the thickest part here is probably a little thicker, 50 millimeters across. So I'm going to need to go put this back inside the Velomobile and wait for an email back from Inner City Bikes, the manufacturer of the Velomobile, to see if they recommend using a shorter like 190 millimeter rear shock to get more range for the cassette in the rear or if I should change it out to elastomers which are like thick like almost like rubber bands or just rubber that compresses. Well I hope you enjoyed the video of the rear suspension of the Velomobile. If you want to see more Velomobile content be sure to subscribe for the latest and greatest of my channel regarding my Velomobile. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great and wonderful day, and I appreciate all the thumbs up.